Today on Rock the Park, we're trying something new. Woo! Repelling down canyon walls. Oh! And trying out the ultimate water slide. Oh, man. In a landscape carved by giant glaciers. I mean, right here, this is power. We're in Jasper National Park, and it all starts right now. I'm Jack Stewart. Uh, this is the real deal. And I'm Colton Smith. These are mountains. We've been buddies for years. Always in search of the next adventure. Dude, what was that? We share a passion for our national parks and other wild places around the world. Oh my God. Man. Heading off the beaten path, pushing our limits, and experiencing nature's best kept secrets. Here we go. <laughs> it's how we rock the park. I'm looking down there, I don't see a clear route. How do we do this? Uh, good question. I gotta get down into the turbo wash without slipping. Here we go. Oh man, it's cold. Oh. Ah! Ah! We love learning new skills, and rappelling down a 100 foot waterfall is just the kind of challenge we're looking for. Jasper National Park is full of canyons, mountains, and glacial waterfalls. No wonder it's been named a World Heritage Site. All right, everybody, we are in Canada. Jasper National Park in the province of Alberta is the largest park in the Canadian Rockies. We're driving the Icefields Parkway, a road that runs 144 miles from Banff National Park through Jasper. The Canadian Rockies seem to just go on forever, and the scenery here is mind-blowing. Look at that. Just enormous glaciers, jagged, rocky mountains, and you can see the glacial scarring everywhere. The parkway is one of the most beautiful drives in North America, and it's a great place to see wildlife. And this morning, that means tons of bighorn sheep. It really makes sense why you see wildlife from the road so much. This is the path of least resistance, and just like us, they like to take the easy way sometimes, too. Look at the horns on that guy. When you see a ram with horns that curl around like these, you've got an adult male. Females have much shorter horns that curve only slightly. It seems like morning definitely is the best time to spot wildlife. Everybody's out having breakfast. A little bit further down the road, and we spot this guy. There are about 900,000 black bears in North America, and more than half of those live in Canada. He's probably hunting for buffalo berries. They're an important food source for bears, and they can put away as many as 250,000 of them a day. After another hour or so on the road, we hit our first stop, the Athabasca Glacier, which is part of the Columbia Ice Field. This sign right here is telling us that the Athabasca Glacier used to be at this point in 1925. The sign that marks where this thing was at in 1935 is way down there. When heavy snow hits the mountains, it compresses into ice and forms a glacier. But the Athabasca Glacier has been shrinking for more than a century. We drive past more and more date markers, almost to the base of the melting glacier, a full mile away. You can see where this glacier once sat. I mean, it took up this entire valley. And still, man, that is a massive glacier. It's enormous. It's carved out this valley. You've got these jagged peaks that are lining the glacier, and it's carving out that perfect U shape. It's amazing to think that this is a three mile long glacier. What's mind boggling to me is how big it once was. And glaciers, by definition, they retreat and then they come forward again. This glacier is receding 32 feet a year. Glaciers are early indicators of climate change. People have been tracking the retreating ice footprint here since the late 1800s, but the rate of ice loss accelerated after 1920. Melting glaciers make sea levels rise, and the ones here are a triple threat. They're feeding rivers that go not only to the Pacific Ocean, but to the Atlantic Ocean and the Arctic Ocean. That's why seeing this thing recede so much is troubling, mm. because it does affect so many different water sources it affects the entire environment. The Athabasca Glacier Melt feeds the iconic Athabasca River, which is the source of the stunning lakes and waterfalls that we find along the parkway. Now, we came up here to Jasper National Park to try something brand new. We're gonna go canyoneering. 
That means we'll be traveling down and across an extreme mix of wet and dry cliffs, including waterfalls. Wow. Oh my gosh. Holy. Most of this water is probably coming from that glacier. Yeah. I mean, we yeah. saw how much it's receding. This is where all of that is going. I mean, right here, this is power. Tomorrow, we will be canyoneering down a waterfall, but for now, we're short on daylight, and tomorrow's gonna be a long one. Colton plans to pitch a tent, and I'm gonna do some car camping. You have gotta be kidding me. His bag is completely exploded all over the car. He's got his stuff everywhere. Hey, whoa, can you pick up your stuff, please? Yeah, let me get my tent set up first. No, dude, I gotta set up the car while you're doing that. Can you just pick it up? I had to bring a lot of stuff on this adventure, some of which was not exactly clean. Last time I checked, there's no laundry mat in the back seat. What am I supposed to do? Nothing, there's nothing I can do. Meanwhile, I pop open the sunroof, throw mosquito netting over the car, and I'm set to sleep under the stars. Both of us are gonna need a good night's sleep to prepare for what's to come. The time has come. We're going canyoneering. We're in Jasper, the largest national park in the Canadian Rockies, preparing to go canyoneering. It's bright and early. I am packed up and ready to go, because we need to bust a move and get over to canyoneering. Yo. What time is it? It's like 7 o'clock. Yeah, we got 20 minutes, man. Typically, I'm the one who's disorganized, but not this morning. Jack's the one behind schedule. We're meeting up with a canyoneering expert. That is, if we get there in time. I am all set to go, and he is not even close, but I'm going to take the high road. Uh, Colton was organized this morning, so I got to hand it to him. We are headed to the eastern edge of the park to deep dive into one of the area's lesser known canyons. Now, the only way to do that is to canyoneer, to rappel down into it. And the one that we're going to be exploring is gonna take us through waterfalls. We're gonna have to do some swimming and really go head first into this thing. We're not exactly starting off small for our first canyoneering experience. Well, sometimes that's the best way to learn quickly. <laughs> that's right. Joe Storms is a local canyoneering pro who will show us the ropes. This is a big day for us. Uh, we've never gone canyoneering before, so we are pumped. We've done rock climbing before. Does any of that transfer over, or is this just a completely different animal? There are definitely certain skills that are transferable. Uh, certainly movement on the rock, uh, some of the rope skills. What makes canyoneering here so incredible? We have these, uh, these tall mountains, the Rockies, and uh, uh, they produce actually quite an array of different canyons. We have dry canyons, there's wet canyons, what I call big water canyons. Uh, most of the water in the canyon is actually from a spring. We'll actually see the creek that uh, we're going to step over, and then when we eventually get into the canyon, this water is actually going to be coming from the side of the canyon, and uh, we're going to go right through it. All yeah. right, nice. To reach the year-round spring that feeds Ogre Canyon, we trek over a dry canyon bed and up a steep ridge. So this right here is Brule Lake, which is essentially a wider portion of the Athabasca River. Now, our canyon is also going to feed right into that river, which is being fed by the Athabasca Glacier, which we were on yesterday. So it's super cool to see how many things are connected here, and the root of that is usually one of the glaciers. Let's gear up. All right. So we want to dress for full immersion. This will be the warmest you will be for the day. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, at least I brought the layers. Oh, no. Shoot. No sandwich? Nope. I didn't grab my hood. Oh. Full immersion. Full immersion means we'll be completely drenched at times by a glacier-fed waterfall. And not having my hood means I'm going to be very cold. This doesn't look like a lot of water. No, so it's a, just a narrow kind of column of water. It's being funneled here, but once it's, it's allowed to kind of spread out. When it uh, starts free-falling, it's quite impressive. And it's going to look big. OK. okay. Yeah. 
one of the great things about this water here is it's coming out of a spring from the ground and this is as clean as it gets. You can drink it straight from the source. And man, is it good. In this canyon, we'll be rappelling down steep and vertical rock cliffs and even part of a waterfall using ropes. It's where a lot of climbing accidents can happen, so going in prepared is crucial. Once we're in there, the biggest rappel is around 20 meters or so. It's about 60 feet. 60 feet or so? Okay, 65 feet to be exact. So is the next stop our first rappel? Pretty much so, yeah. Yes. Okay, we're doing it. The time has come. We're going canyoneering. Once we've got the hang of rappelling, the rest of Ogre Canyon goes down, way down. Whoa. Whoa. We're in Jasper National Park in Alberta, Canada, about to descend into a deep limestone gorge called Ogre Canyon. It's full of steep rock walls, sinkholes created by underground springs, and the ultimate rush, lots of waterfalls. The ideal place to try our hand at canyoneering. It's time for our first rappel. I need to trust the gear, lean back, and just lower down. On this first leg, we'll be rappelling down about 25 feet. Canyoneering ropes are water resistant, and they're stiffer than the climbing ropes, so they'll last longer against the sharp rocks. Sweet. We just dropped into this canyon, and it is spectacular. Ogre Canyon isn't very long, but it's deep, and the walls are really smooth. The walls are sculpted by this water, and already, it looks like we're in the narrows. What we're going to do is a little movement on the rock. We're going to avoid touching any water on the, the bottom of the canyon here. The idea is that as the rock gets steeper, my angle gets steeper. How do these shoes do on rock like this? Are they pretty sticky to it? A little secret, uh, the shoes that I'm wearing are a little stickier than yours. <laughs> I had a feeling. This is a technique called stemming, a way of traveling through canyons without touching the ground. It comes in handy if you're trying to avoid deep water or deep pits that would be tough to escape. Yeah, so we'll just do a little wander upstream here and see what uh, we can find. What he's really doing, Jack, is he's seeing if we fall in. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> All right, so here's a little bit of a tricky issue. What do you think? Just follow it around. Rock, paper, scissors to see who goes first. Here we go. Ready? Yeah. Rock, uh, paper, two, scissors. Two, two. You're, oh, first. Oh, you're first. You're first. That's exactly okay. what I wanted. There we go, yeah. Ooh. Oh, he's getting creative with it. See, this is where the short guy. This is where he uses his strength. <laughs> <laughs> All right, do you think he's going to fall in? Probably. I have very little confidence. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well Thank well you. What I think is awesome about this place is you would never know it's here unless you came up and explored. Yeah. And now that we've warmed up, so to speak, it's time to dive right in. Kind of cool down. Oh, yeah, this is nice. This is fantastic. Woo. Our next rappels have a lot more water, and so does the trek to reach them. Oh, yeah. Gets deep here. Nice and deep. A pit is a vertical drop that's too deep and steep to descend without ropes. Is this it? Right here, this is the first drop. Ooh. Just probably watch where I'm stepping, <laughs> huh? All right, it's time for the next rappel, and I think I'm up. As I'm going down, I'm trying to make my body like a table. Just keep walking down this wall. And then shuffle the rope through. Oh, I see. OK, all right. There we go. Canyoneering is like any other sport. You can learn the technique, but it's going to be different with every individual rappel. I need to trust the gear, lean back, and just let Joe lower me down. Remember, be the table. He's about to hit the water. Let's see what happens. Oh, are you OK? My feet slip off of the wall. I swing around. I nail my shoulder right into the side of the rock. Nothing Colton does is graceful, so I knew he was going to hit that, and he was going to hit it hard. I can hear you. Ooh. <laughs> oh, man. 
How did that feel? Oh, well, <laughs> which part? <laughs> Water's one thing, but when it's just trickling constantly, it almost feels like you're kind of tiptoeing on algae. Ogre Canyon is full of waterfalls, but the main event is the turbo wash, which tops them all. It's a 60-foot rappel drop with a route that takes you directly through the raging waterfall. If that last trickle made me slip, the turbo wash could wash us away. Once we're at the turbo wash, the water's gonna be coming down and uh, it's gonna be sensory overload. This is where things are gonna get interesting. The nice, easy, dry rappels, they're over. Now it's time to step it up. We're headed straight into the turbo wash. Oh, oh, oh. We're in the Canadian Rockies, exploring a gorge using a series of techniques called canyoneering. We've hiked, climbed, scrambled, and rappelled to get this far. Now we're ready to drop down Ogre Canyon's wildest descent yet, a 100-foot waterfall fed by glacial runoff. In other words, one very cold rush. This is a part of Jasper National Park that few people see, mainly because it's remote, but also because this canyon is technical. You need skills to go down into it. And that's why we are here, to learn those skills and really experience this. Now it's time to step it up. We're headed straight into the turbo wash. To get to the turbo wash, we have a short 35-foot dry descent down a canyon just alongside the waterfall. If this is dry, we're in trouble. <laughs> Slippery, I swear. <laughs> that is an epic waterfall. Woo! It's incredible. Up top, this stream looks so small. But once it comes over the edge of the cliff into the canyon, it spreads out. The waterfall is about 100 feet long, and we plan to rappel down the last 65 feet of it. Looking at it from here, that doesn't seem possible. I'm looking down there, I don't see a clear route. How do we do this? <laughs> you see this little gully here? Yeah. You could hang out there for uh, you know a second or two, and you're gonna see the water crashing around all around you, and then you're gonna slide right down. We're gonna be lowered, but at the same time, we're tethered to a fixed line that shoots us down into this pool. Looking at the rush of water, I am kicking myself for not remembering my hood. Oh, man, it's cold. Oh, oh, whoa. Now, this is a crucial move. I got to get down into the turbo wash without slipping. Here we go. Oh, 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 oh. I am directly under the waterfall right now. It is just slamming me. I can't see anything. It's just white. Woo -hoo -hoo. Oh. oh, man. I was not expecting that. Oh, oh man, I'm sliding good. Ah! Woo! Ah! I made it. OK. I'm ready to uh, to dry off. I'm, I'm still real cold, guys. Guess yeah. what? We have two more slides to go before we're out of here. Are you serious? Uh, all right, well, whatever. It never ends. The adventure continues. Let's go. Awesome. <laughs> We've driven over 100 miles on one of the most beautiful parkways we've ever seen. Repelled down rocks and waterfalls, all fed by a three-mile-wide glacier. Man, Jasper has it all. Epic. Yeah. I think that's the only word that even comes close to describing this place. Seriously, I, I can't believe how spectacular Jasper is. Literally, the first mile on that road to walking out of that canyon, everything about this place was just Amplified. It was cool to see how water really is a major component of this ecosystem. The borders of countries and parks, they're man-made. Nature's gonna travel where nature's gonna travel. And because of that, we should care what's going on in places like this. We didn't even scratch the surface of what this place has. And I have a feeling we're gonna be coming back time and time again.
Canada has been a trip, and one we can't wait to make again soon. Hey, if we can do it, so can you. So the next chance you get, go out and rock the park. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Make sure to leave any questions or comments that you have. And please subscribe to the channel. There's a lot more to come.